So in 2013, about 22% of students ages 12 to 18 reported being bullied at school. Now, probably at one time, I'm assuming this wasn't like their entire school career, okay? Of students ages 12 to 18, about 14% reported they were made fun of, called names, or insulted, all right? Um, I, I still want to caution. I mean, I think we want to be careful, too. You know, every time I call somebody a, a name, I, it's, I may not be a bully, okay? Kids just do stupid stuff like that, too. But remember the malicious nature of it. That's what we have to really be aware of. 13% reported being the subject of rumors. Well, that should shock no one because everybody gossips, right? Um, I mean, so the police department is like a, a small town. It's a small family, right, of, of a couple thousand. Um, they are the gossipiest group of people. I'm like, you guys are worse than teenage girls. Stop it. I'll hear from somebody from something else, and I'm like, in my head, I'm going, that didn't happen. Like, that didn't even happen. Um, and I'll give you an example. This was funny. Gossipy, right? And, how, and this is adults. This is how it spreads. So a couple of years ago, I went to a birthday party um, out at a bar, and, and a Spurs game was on. Well, for five minutes, I sat down next to a sergeant that I work with. Well, I mean, next to, okay, next, next, we weren't even as close as these chairs next to. So one of my friends is taking pictures. So she takes a picture, and what do you do when you're sitting next to somebody and they take a picture? You go, right, still, a foot, puts a group of pictures up on Facebook, by 10 o'clock the next morning, I had three phone calls. Hey, are you and so-and-so dating? Not five minutes after that picture was taken, I had moved so I could see the Spurs game, right? And that's it. Six months later, I said immediately I called her and said, take it down. Like, I don't, we, I don't need this. Um, six months later, somebody came up to me and said, hey, I heard so-and-so. I'm like, five, five minutes at a park. What? No. Anyway, gossipy, right? People gossip. 4% reported being threatened with harm. 2% reported that others tried to make them do things they didn't want to do. Um, about 4% of students reported being excluded from activities on purpose, right? It's that social bullying. We're not going to play with you. You can see that starts young, too. Now, again, there's a difference between kids just being mean to each other sometimes and the malicious part of it, which is, is what we have to really be observant of, right? 2% um, reported that their property was destroyed by others on purpose. 6% reported they were pushed, shoved, tripped, or spit on. Um, of those students, about 21% reported injury as a result. So that's from the National Center for Education Statistics. Okay. Get this. I really, this slide was really telling for me. So one out of every four students, about 22% reported being bullied during the school year. Listen to this, though, right? 64%, 64% didn't report it. So two-thirds didn't report it, just kind of sucked it up and lived with it, right? More than, I, and I love this because this is a lesson for all of us and our kids and the people we work with, okay? More than half of bullying situations, 57%, stop when a peer intervenes on behalf of the student being bullied. So 57% of the time, if you've, got some, if you've taught your kid to step in there and go, uh-uh, don't do this, it'll stop, right? Because it's not that group pack mentality. Okay? If they're not going to join me in doing this, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. So I think that's really important for us. Okay? Um, but 25%, if you have a school program, it decreases it. How many of your schools have bullying prevention programs? Right? One, two. That's good. It works. It works if we talk about it and we educate people about it. Right? The reasons for being bullied reported most often for students were looks. Right? It's real easy to make fun of somebody looks. I hate, I mean, I will get, because my daughter said this before, well, they're fat. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. No, we're not going to talk like that, right? But it's so easy in vocabulary to pick up that. They're fat. They're ugly. They're whatever, okay? Um, body shape, okay? Race, um, all of those, all of those are, are significant. In 2013, about 14% of 12th graders reported being bullied at school compared with, get this, 28% of 6th graders, 26% of 7th graders, 22% of 8th graders, 23% of 9th graders, 19% of 10th graders, and 20% of 11th graders. Do we see this, how it starts? It actually decreases when they get older. By 12th grade, maybe people have their place. Maybe, maybe we're gaining some maturity. Maybe our frontal lobes are developing enough to know that, hey, like, I shouldn't call them names. I don't know what the, but the trend is that it decreases as they get a little bit older. Right. Higher percentages of students in 6th through 11th uh, than students in 12th grade reported being bullied. All right. Now here's the thing that we just discussed too. I hear this. Well, they're being bullied. It's that public school. There's not enough supervision. I'm going to pull them out. When they do studies, 
It doesn't matter. Just as much of it goes on in private schools as public, just as much of it goes in, on in rural areas as urban. Okay? Um, th there's, there's no difference. It can happen anywhere. Because I've had parents do that. Well, I'm going to pull them out and put them in, in private school. It can happen there, too. And depending on the private school, right, we know there might be a level of privilege there that, again, I, I hate to you know, keep going back to this, this kiddo in Alamo Heights, but it was Alamo Heights, arguably the best public school district in San Antonio, right, as far as graduation rate and some other things. It happened there. And it happened when they moved him. And I think they moved him to a private school. Okay, it followed him. Okay, we just need to really be aware of that. It goes on everywhere. Um, okay. So what are some signs of bullying? These are things to look for. Because I think as parents, now we, we're probably better at it when it's not our child, right, and observing things. But when there are kids, I don't know what happens to us, right, but it's like head in the sand moments sometimes. My kid, that would never happen to my kid. My kid would never do that. My kid would tell me if they were being bullied, right? Well, statistics say they wouldn't for the most part because they're embarrassed. Um, so what are some signs? Clearly, if they're coming home beat up, that's a sign. That should be a clue, okay? Unexplained loss of toys, school supplies, clothing, lunches, or money, and usually not once. You look for the systemic stuff, like, right? Like, they, they're coming home without their school lunch money all the time, or they're coming home hungry because somebody took their lunch money. I think it's a little bit different now because I don't, at least, I, I don't know, at least at my kid's school, we put money in an account and it's all automated, okay? But if they start coming home without their school supplies, without books. The gym monitors. Yeah, and that's expensive. That's expensive. There are families that can't, can't afford to have replacement shoes, right? Um, interesting. Interesting. Close, okay, I said that. Yeah, clothes, toys, books, electronic items are damaged or missing. Um, you know, because what, what do kids do with a phone or something? Like grab it and toss it, and so their phone's broken all of a sudden, right? This one's when they all of a sudden don't want to go to school anymore or don't want to go to activities because they don't feel protected, right? Because they, they don't want to be exposed to that and you're not, you're not going to be around or the teachers aren't going to be around. Okay. Afraid of riding the school bus. Bullying, and, and I'll show a clip in a minute, bullying, and this is when that, that lady that got bullied, the bus monitor, if you don't remember, I'll show it to you. You'll, you will. Um, bullying on buses because who's supervising? If they don't have a bus monitor, who's supervising? Not the person driving, it's probably all they can do to keep that big thing on the road. They don't have time to pay attention to the 30 kids behind them, okay? That's kind of an unprotected place. Uh, afraid to be left alone once you're there, dismissal, suddenly clinging, um, suddenly sullen, withdrawn, evasive, remarks about feeling lonely. Any sort, any sort of marked change in behavior, okay, or personality. Where all of a sudden you had a kid that up until the fourth grade loved going to school. School was great, and all of a sudden they're, they, I'm sick. I don't want to go. They're nervous. They feel bad in the morning. They're dragging. That's a sign. It should be a sign, at least for us to ask. Um, appear sad, moody, angry, or anxious or depressed, and that mood lasts with no known cause. And other physical complaints. Because what are the first thing kids do when they want to get out of something? I don't feel good. And how hard is it to prove that they have an upset stomach or a headache? Okay. I mean, kids that, you know, they're throwing up before school because they're so anxious and they don't want to go, right? Um, or when they're going to the nurse's office because guess what? It gets them out of recess. It gets them out of, away from that person um, where they're being bullied, right? So, uh, other signs. Difficulty sleeping, nightmares, cry self to sleep, it, an increase in bedwetting past the age where it's appropriate. You know, we know kids can have accidents for a long time. If, if you have, you know, if you're lucky, you have a kid that's a good sleeper. Sometimes they just bladder control. Uh, changes in eating habits. If they begin bullying other people, because what do we know about bullying? Often these kids that are bullied learned it. So then if, if your kid that's being bullied starts bullying over, it's kind of a control thing, but it's a sign. They're learning it from somewhere. Right? Waits, to get home, or waits to get home to use the bathroom, because it talks about a school, a school and park bathrooms because they're not adult supervised can be hot spots for bullying. Right? Uh, suddenly has fewer friends or doesn't want to be with the regular group. Ravenous when they come home, sudden and significant drop in, uh, drop in grades, blame self for the problems or I'm not good enough, okay, because it, it'll, it'll hit their self-esteem hard. And talks about feeling helpless or about suicide or runs away, okay, because they're just trying to avoid it. All those are signs. All those are things we really, really need to look at, okay. So what are some of the consequences of bullying? We know those psychosomatic symptoms because 
uh, that happens to all of us too, right? When we're anxious, when we're, when we're going through a stressful time, how do we show it? Not sleeping well, muscle tension, headaches, stomach issues. They do the same thing, right? Watch little kids when they get nervous. They'll always be like, my tummy, my, oh, my tummy hurts. My tummy's upset, okay? They do, they do the same thing we do. Other nervous habits, if they start to chew their fingernails, pulling their hair, right? Picking at things. Um, clearly, obviously, any sorts of cutting behaviors. All of those are clues, okay? Other psychological disorders. I mean, you guys you know, you work with kids. How prevalent is depression and anxiety with teenagers? It's really common. I think depression is something like 33% at any given time. They have depression symptoms, okay? It's just kind of an anxious time of life anyway because so much is going on. Then you add this on top of it, think about how much worse it's going to be. Yeah? Uh, Employment issues, clearly not employment issues with us, but the going to school part of it anyway, okay? Poor social relationships, and we know, right? People that are bullied long enough, because we see it now, it's greater risk for suicide. Especially, again, kids don't have the foresight and planning to think this isn't going to last forever. All they think is how painful it is now, and they're impulsive enough to do it, okay? We talk about this, you know, suicide's the leading cause of death in, te sorry, the second leading cause of death in teenagers, right? I work with officers. We've had officers' kids kill themselves with their duty weapons, okay? So I lecture every week, we have in-service, I lecture every, every week about how if you have a gun in the house, a loaded gun, well, not even loaded, a gun with ammunition, teenagers are five times more likely to kill themselves if you have an available loaded gun. Why? Because they're impulsive, okay? We know this, you guys that work with teenagers too, right? You know, she was dating, you know, he was dating Becky. Becky broke up to go out with his best friend, John. He was in love. They dated for two weeks. And it's the end of the world, right? And they're telling you about how bad the world is, and in your head you're thinking, it's going to get so much worse. You don't even know. Oh, this is nothing. Just wait. Um, but they're, they're impulsive, and so they're five times more likely to kill themselves if there's a loaded gun in the house. So if that is the case with you guys, lock them up, right? Because some people tell me, well, I've taught them about gun safety. Oh, goody. But nobody ever has taught a teenager how not to be impulsive. I don't, I don't think. If you have, let me know, okay? I want, I want the tips now. I don't know how you do it. Um, but suicides, are, they're at very great risk, all right? So let's talk about that bully and things to look for. Because, right, what do we know about bullies? Are they sneaky? They can be. They can be. I've seen them. Boy, they can be so smooth to the adult's face and so sneaky behind their backs, right? Because they know how to... They know how to you know, schmooze things. They're, they're good like that. So what are some signs of a child bully? Well, clearly getting into physical or verbal fights, somebody that's, that's physically or verbally aggressive, okay, is a clue. Uh, having friends who bully others, because what do we know? I mean, travel in packs, right? Um, people who are increasingly aggressive, people who get in trouble, detention, go to the principal's office frequently, any of those things. Have unexplained extra money or new belongings. This one's great. Blame others for their problems when they never own it and that's always their fault. What's that a sign of a budding what? What's that? Yeah, personality disorder for sure, right? When it's never their fault, okay? All of us have to take ownership sometimes, right? It's never, not, it's never always somebody else's fault. When they don't accept responsibility for their actions and are competitive and worry about their reputation or popularity because if they're really, really focused on that, we know some kids will go to great lengths to gain popularity. And sometimes that means making really bad decisions. Right. So what are some of the psychological uh, diagnoses associated with bullying? We know, okay, overall that children with mental health disorders were three times more likely to bully other children. So of 10,616 children with, mental health, uh, with a mental health diagnosis, 2,500 demonstrated bullying behavior, okay? Um, and then you can look at it. Wait, I think... I, I don't know what that second number is, but I don't think that's right. I'll have to look at that. Uh, but anyway, we know they're more likely, okay? So when they look at the type of mental health disorder adjusted for age, sex, race, race ethnicity, neighborhood safety, and parent-child communication, they found the following odds. Depression, okay, 3.31%. Uh, because we know with depression, kids tend to be, instead of be, I mean, they can be sad, but they tend to be what? More irritable and more impulsive, depressed kids more irritable and impulsive. It's going to say that on the next slide, I think. Anxiety, it's higher. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Why that? Because they're impulsive, right? They do stuff, and they don't think things through. Okay? Um, 
my oldest kiddo. Okay, my first two were adopted, and then you know how that happens, surprise. Um, so my oldest son, he, he, we brought him here, he, my, his dad and I brought him here, actually, and did some behavioral stuff, and it worked wonders. He was getting into trouble, not for, not for on-purpose bullying, but he'd want to be line leader. So he was hurting people. I mean, he was the kid who trimmed somebody's hair when they let him have scissors. Why they let an ADHD kid have scissors unsupervised at the age of five, I'm not sure, but they did. Um, they were an art circle. He colored on the back of somebody's shirt. Um, it, it, he was doing stuff like that. And then, and then he's the kid that's like, what? Well, his birth mom had, you know, well, she used meth. Um, and so whether that's the reason or not, I don't know. He's the sweetest, smartest kid ever, but really inattentive. I mean, he's the kid that you're like, put on your shoes, <laughs> okay? Or he'll wander and he'll turn back and be like, what am I supposed to be doing? right? Um, coping. We brought him here. We did some behavioral stuff. So much better. I mean, he's got a great kinder, a teacher in kindergarten who's working with him. Really? She, we talked to the school and worked with the school before, so prepped going in. So those ADHD kids sometimes can be perceived as a bully or will do bullying behaviors because of their impulsivity. Now, sure, sometimes it's malicious and intentional, but sometimes just because you know how they think. They don't, okay? They don't stop and go. And, and most kids that age don't either, and this just makes it worse. Right? And then your oppositional defiant disorder, and I think we could see why that one's so high. Okay? That's probably pretty, pretty obvious. So what are the, some, when questions the finding of bullying among children who are depressed, what they found is that depression in adolescence is often associated with impulsivity, which can fuel, fuel that bullying behavior. Besides which, I want to add to that. Right? When we're depressed and we don't like ourselves very much and we're cranky, how do we tend to take it out on others? Okay? Misery loves company, right? If kids are unhappy, and you know, you all know they have kids. Boy, if a kid's unhappy in the house, they're going to try to make everybody around them unhappy too, right? They're throwing a tantrum, then everybody's going to get the brunt of it, okay? So what are some signs of bullying in elementary school? And I want you to note how these change, because they change from grade to grade, a little bit, okay? Uh, examples of physical bullying, slapping, hitting, uh, pinching, punching, kicking, locking somebody in a confined space, right? Um, they just, they, the kids do that anyway if they can right? Well, lock them in the bathroom, lock them out of the bathroom, whatever. Unwelcome touching or extortion, verbal bullying, name calling, unwelcome teasing. I, I like that because I'm not sure that teasing is ever really welcome with little kids, but okay. Um, taunting, spreading rumors, gossiping, racist or homophobic comments. Uh, social bullying, excluding from a group, I think that's really common, okay? Uh, threatening or insulting graffiti, you know, and that's the writing in the bathrooms kind of thing, that still, that still happens. Go to an elementary school bathroom, right? That still happens. Um, threatening notes, letters, or emails, threatening words, actions, or weapons. And there's a bunch of uh, bullying research out there, so I encourage you to look at it too, okay? How does it change in middle school? Well, it gets a little more overt, I think, and a little more physical, if you will. So physical bullying increases verbal, that social isolation, that's a common theme. Cyberbullying, because this is about the age, right? Where we let kids have phones, computer access, all that other stuff. And we've already discovered there's a lot of stuff out there that we're not really aware about that they can get access to. Relational bullying and then sexual bullying starts too, right? Look at that, that Amanda Todd story, right? Send me a picture of your boobs. If you don't, I'm going to put it all over the place. Well, that's sexual bullying. And he did it anyway, 